So let's do 5.3. Hey, what operation do we have when I put two parentheses next to each other like that? Multiply. Now we're multiplying, of course we're multiplying numbers, decimals are numbers, but how in the world are we supposed to multiply 32.41 times 7.6? Line them up. Well, li okay, line them up. Now, does it matter if we line up by decimal place or not? Yes. Yeah. Well, let's look at it. Oops. But it has to be like that. To multiply? No. To add, yes. To add, yes. But I want you to look at something. If you imagined this, check it out. Imagine these numbers without the decimal. You'd have 3, 2, 4, 1, and you would have 76, right? Mm -hmm. Where would the 76 go? Below the 4 and 1. It'd go like that, wouldn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you'd multiply. Mm -hmm. And how would you multiply these numbers? What would you do here? So six times what? One. And then six times what? Four. And then and then you do all those, wouldn't you? Yes. You would do six, and then you you multiply the rest of it. You get all the way through whatever these numbers happen to be, and then what you what would you do? Okay. Would I put the answer right here? No. An X or a zero. What's that X or a zero called, folks? Yeah, place value holder. So. I like the x, that way I know that I, I have the place value holder. And then you would multiply the 7, and you get these things, and then you would add those columns together. Are you with me? You are going to do identically the same thing with this. You're going to imagine that there is no decimal place at all. We'll deal with the decimal place later on. So when you line these up, no, you don't actually have to line them up by the decimal. That's for addition, subtraction, and keep your place value handy. That's okay, that's great. But with multiplication, you deal with that place value in a different way. So we'll line these up. 32.41 and 7.6. We're going to multiply just like we did over here. We'll get the same exact numbers we would normally get. So stick it out with me. What are we going to get when we multiply the 6 times my top number? 6. 6. Great. What's next? So 2. What's next, ladies and gentlemen? So we multiply and then we add that 2. Good. We'll carry the 1. Then what do we get? Are you okay getting one nine four four six? What's next again? Seven. The seven. Good. What are we gonna do before we start multiplying the Place seven? That's still applicable. You still do need that. So we'll put an X down there or a zero if you like. And you know what? One more thing. I'm gonna erase these numbers. That way, I don't get confused. And we'll do the same exact operation with our seven times each of those digits in the first number. The first digit is gonna give us what? Seven. Everybody, then what? 28. 28. That wasn't everybody. Come on. <coughs> and then what? 16. 16. We'll carry the 1. And lastly, we'll get how much? 42. What now? Add. Just like normal multiplication of large numbers. So when we add these things, place value by place value, you get 6. Then you get 11. We'll carry that over. Then you get 13, we'll carry that over. Then you get 15, we'll carry that over. I'm sorry, 16. Mistake. We'll carry over the 1. Then we get a 4 and a 2. Raise your hand if you're okay at getting that 2, 4, 6, 3, 1, 6. Now comes the place value. You've got to get this part right. Here's how you deal with place value when you're multiplying decimal numbers. You count up the total number of place values place value, like kind of like a place value holder, from the right-hand side of each of your digits cumulatively. That means that you go over here to this number, count over how many spots you'd have to move to get to the, the decimal. How many would you have to move? Two. Two. One, two. And from this spot, how many? One. So all together, you would have to move one, two, three spots. 
that you count from the right hand side. Are you with me on this? Listen, look at the board. I need to be very clear because if you did it from the left hand side, it would come out the same for this one case. That's a coincidence. You're counting from the right hand side. Are you with me? One, two, three. Use that down here as well from the right hand side again. You counted from the right, you're going to start from the right. Move that decimal exactly the same number of places that you just counted. If you went one, two, three, you're going to go one, two, three, and that's where your decimal place goes. So from here, this would be one, two, three total moves. One, two, three moves. Your answer is two, four, six, point three, one, six. So you're multiplying like you would for whole numbers. It's just at the very end, you're taking the decimal places from the right-hand side, counting those, and applying that to the, the product. How many people feel all right with what we just talked about? Good deal. We'll try just really two more examples. Then we'll go ahead, I'll give you a couple of on your own. We'll talk about circumference and area, what those things actually mean. And uh, we'll move on. Okay, let's try it together. First thing we're going to do is multiply, of course, the 8 times each of those digits. What are we going to get out of that, please? 8. Hey, good. Okay, what's the next one? 48. 48. All right. Even if you did the 8 and then the 4, you'd have a 0 plus 4. That's going to give you the 48. True? Yeah. Do I need to keep going and get the zeros? Yeah. yeah. I could if you want. I mean, yeah. you'd get another 0 and then nothing, nothing else. What's the next thing we'd do? Place value holder. Great, I like it. Place value holder, then what? Zero. How many zeros are you going to get? All of them. Okay, so if you did this, you'd get zero, 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 right? If I did this one, I'd get zero, 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 yeah? Do you absolutely need to show those? No. No, not really. As long as you know what to do with the number of place values. So, for instance, if you got all these, you would get just a whole bunch of zeros. True? Because you have zero times a number, it's going to give you zero. If you add them up, you're still only going to get eight, eight, four, and a zero. Are you with me, folks? In fact, some of you might not even have this zero. You might not even have any of these zeros. Because you, you know you can stop and multiply the numbers because those zeros are just going to give you zero over and over and over again. Do you follow? Yes. Now, why can we eliminate the zeros? Well, they're going to ultimately matter. They really will. There's going to be zeros in this problem. But the reason why we can ultimately get rid of them is because if you count the number of zeros, how many, how many place values are we going to three, have to move? Five. Sure, I heard three. You're probably talking about just the top one, two, three, from the right-hand side. And then another how many? Two. Altogether, how many is that? Five. Five, five from the right-hand side over here. Five from the right-hand side. One, two, three. Wait a second, what do you do? Put zero, zero. zero. That's where the zeros come back at you. Five total spots. You get point zero zero four eight eight. And that's your answer. Five total spots from the right hand side that created those two zeros that you weren't really showing up here. So far so good? Hey, does multiplication of decimals still depend on the multiplication rule for, for signs? What do you think? Yes. For instance, on this number, are we going to get a positive or negative? Negative. That still, that still happens. There's still numbers. It still works. So I know that that's going to be a negative. I'm going to hold off on that thought, do my multiplication like I normally would, and then we'll just put that back. So here I'll have 
3.2 and, let's see, 8, 0, 0, 0.008. Does it matter which number goes on the top for multiplication? What do you no. think? No. Not really. I mean, it's commutative. That means you can switch around. It doesn't make a difference. So I'm going to choose to have those zeros on the bottom. Now let's go ahead and do this together. We multiply the 8 times the 2 and get how much? 16. I'll carry the 1. Somebody else, 8 times the 3 gives you... Add the 1. Now, look, I could put a place value holder here. But if I did, I'd just get 0, 0. And then again, 0, 0. Are you with me? So really, we're pretty much done on this problem. The only thing that we'd get after that is a whole bunch of zeros. Right now is the time you're going to count the number of place values. So do that on your own. Keep it to yourself. Count the number of place values. You're going to have to move that decimal. How many? Four. Four from the left or from the right? From the right. From the right. OK, going towards the left. So from this side, you move it one, two, three, four. We're going to have to create one zero. You get point zero two. Five, six. We moved to one, and then one, two, three. That's four total splices. Splices. Four splices from the right-hand side. Move that to the ending product, and then you're done. Is that our answer? Yes. Yes. Really? No. Forget the negative. Uh -oh. negative. Hey, that happens all the time. That's why I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get that to get you to recognize that. This happens all the time. Are these problems really, really that hard? No. The math isn't all that hard. No. But forgetting the negative, that's what's going to kill your, your problems, okay? Be careful on that. Make sure that if, you, if you're identifying these rules and using those rules, make sure if you get the appropriate sign, you're at least writing it, this is definitely going to be a negative 0 0.0256. That's our final answer. Try a couple on your own here. We'll talk about maybe two more things and be done for today. I'll throw one more up on the board. Evaluate that one. 25xy for x equals negative point.